Hi friends. So let's see another example based on Mohr circle. The state of stresses acting on a plane element is shown to us, and with the help of Mohr circle, we need to find out the principal plane and principal stresses. And the second is the stress component on element obtained by rotating given element counterclockwise through thirty degrees. So this is basically the actual element here. And if I rotate this element by 30 degree in the counter clockwise direction so i am going to get this plane over here so this plane gets transformed to this plane friends so we need to find the stress component on this particular plane so let me first name the planes over here so i am going to call this point as point a friends this point as point b so this point i am calling as point c okay we have got a plane over here as plane ab this plane ab is having normal stress 100 mpa and the shear stress is 48 mpa and over here i have got plane cb this plane cb has got normal stress 60 mpa and the shear stress over here will be same as this so since it is 48 mpa this is also going to be 48 mpa friends so with the help of these two given plane we can draw the mohr circle before drawing the mohr circle let's understand a sign convention for mohr circle so to draw mohr circle we are going to follow this sign convention friends the horizontal axis represent the normal axis and the vertical axis represent the shear axis so normal axis will represent the normal stresses so towards right will be having tension that is positive normal stress towards left will have compressive stress that is negative normal stress if your shear stress is acting in the clockwise direction on the particular plane so it is taken as negative and if the shear stress is acting anti clockwise direction it is taken as positive if a plane makes anti clockwise angle the anti clockwise angle is taken as positive So with the help of this sign convention we are going to construct the mohr circle and on the basis of mohr circle we shall try to answer these questions which are asked over here that is question a and question b so first of all let's draw the mohr circle so to construct mohr circle i am going to draw first a horizontal axis friends this is called as normal axis or normal stress axis and this one is a vertical axis called as shear stress axis on this particular graph so i am going to locate plane ab on this graph okay so this normal stress is called as sigma xx and this shear stress is called as tau xy okay so this is a normal stress acting in the x direction and this is shear stress acting in the y direction so it is called as tau xy this shear stress is acting in the x direction so it is called as tau yx and this is a normal stress acting in the y direction so i am going to call as sigma yy so we have got a normal stress here as sigma xx normal stress here as sigma yy shear stress acting on this particular plane tau xy and shear stress acting on this particular plane is tau yx okay now as far as the values are concerned this is tensile so it is going to be positive sigma xx is positive friends this is also tensile so this is also going to be positive as per this sign convention shear stress over here the shear stress is acting on this particular plane and it is rotating plane in the clockwise direction so clockwise direction shear stress is taken as negative over here so this is going to be negative this is negative value friends So this shear stress that is tau y x is rotating this plane in the anti clockwise sense so anti clockwise sense shear stress is positive so this is going to be positive this is positive friends okay so we have taken the values of normal and shear stresses as per the sign convention given over here so now let's plot plane ab on the mohr circle first okay this graph has normal axis and shear axis over here so this axis represent the normal stress and this axis represent the shear stress so since we have normal and shear stresses on these axis respectively so this plane ab i am going to plot with the help of the normal stress acting on it and the shear stress acting on it so normal stress over here is 100 mpa so it is positive so this is zero friends you can see here this is zero so towards right you have you will be having positive values so 100 mpa means i am going to take one digit as 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 and 100 so over here you will be getting the normal stress value and the shear stress is 48 mpa so upward 10 20 30 40 48 and 48 will be somewhere near to this particular point so i am going to plot that so this particular point is point ab which represents the plane ab friends and it has normal stress 100 and the shear stress minus 48 okay minus means it is upward i have shown over here so i am able to plot the point ab over here right and this point ab represents plane ab similarly i can plot a point cb which will represent a plane cb so this has 60 mpa normal stress and 48 mpa shear stress this is positive friends so positive will go below the axis so you'll be having another point over here you can see so this point is 
representing plane BC, this plane friends, the normal stress is 60 and shear stress is 48. Again positive I am plotting downward, right? So I got two points over here friends. So when we connect these two points, this point of intersection with the axis, this point represents the center of Mohr circle. Now we will drop a perpendicular from here on the normal stress axis as well as from here friends and we will construct a circle passing through these two points and having center over here. So this is a very simple procedure. You can put the center over here and you can draw a circle with radius equal to this value right. So this circle is called as Mohr circle. Now with the help of this Mohr circle I can locate any plane and I can find out stress on that particular plane. For example this plane AC over here I can locate this plane AC on this Mohr circle because this plane is inclined at 30 degree with plane AB. So plane AB is here. So with respect to plane AB this plane AC will be making the angle double of it. Mohr circle always will have double angle compared to the actual condition. So if it is 30 plane AC will be inclined at 60 degrees to the plane AB from here I can go 60 degrees like this. This is anti-clockwise so I'll go like this and I'll locate a point somewhere here. So this is how we can locate any required plane on the Mohr circle. So this segment I have drawn at angle 60 degree in the anti-clockwise direction from plane AB right. So this particular point what I have got over here this point indicates the plane AC right. So now this is the location of plane AC by using Mohr circle. So whatever value of normal and shear stress this plane AC will have we can get it from the graph itself. So if you look at here friends this value will be indicating the normal stress. So if you see here 10, 20, 30, 40 and approximately it is 48 something. So here you can say that the normal stress will be approximately 48 MPa. We can understand graphically over here and the vertical height this height indicates the shear stress. So this value will be showing the shear stress on inclined plane. Okay, So this plane will have a normal stress let's say sigma n and will have a shear stress let's say tau. So value of normal stress we have got here which is around approximately 48 MPa from the graph and the shear stress I can get it from here. So it is 10, 20, 30 and 40. So this value shear stress will be approximately 40 MPa. So just by using the Mohr circle I can locate the plane unknown plane that is AC and on that particular plane the value of normal stress and shear stress can be calculated from the graph itself. Okay, so this is how we can use the Mohr circle to find the stress components on element AC or the plane AC over here friend. Okay, which is inclined at angle 30 degree in the counterclockwise direction with respect to plane AB. Now this can be proved by analytical method also. So we will be doing the same calculation with the help of the analytical method just to ensure whatever value we have got is correct. So let's see here we'll be proceeding with the analytical method. So if you have here the sigma xx that is this value friends is 100 MPa tensile and we have friends sigma yy that is 60 MPa over here friends that I have written here. Also the shear stress acting on this particular plane is downward and that is it is rotating in the clockwise direction. So it is minus 48 MPa clockwise I have put okay. This is as per this sign convention friends. Now the angle of inclination of the plane AC with respect to plane AB is 30 degrees. So always we take 2 theta double of it and that is 60 degree and it is again anti-clockwise. So anti-clockwise angle you can see here is taken as positive. So I have to put positive over here. So I am going to put all these values into the equation. So stresses on a plane AC will be given by this expression. This is a normal stress friend. So normal stress is given by sigma xx plus sigma yy by 2 plus sigma xx minus sigma yy by 2 times cos 2 theta plus tau xy sin 2 theta. Now I am going to substitute the corresponding values in this expression. So let's see what we get. 100 plus 60 by 2, 100 minus 60 by 2, 2 theta is 60 degrees so cos 60 minus tau xy is negative 48 so minus 48 times sin 60. And if you evaluate that, you will be getting the value of sigma as 48.43 MPa. You can see here, by approximate calculation from the graph, we got 48 MPa, right? And analytical method also gives us, gives us almost the same value that is 48.43 MPa. So this procedure is acting as long as we are talking about the stresses on inclined plane, we got normal stress, right? Let's do the shear stress also. 
so there is a shear stress formula also friends so with this expression we can find out the shear stress on any inclined plane just substitute the value of theta over here and the value respective value of sigma xx sigma yy and tau xy so when i substitute those values so i this is 100 minus 60 so 40 by 2 and here 48 cos 60 again and if i do the calculation first i get minus 43.32 mpa so you can see here approximately over here i got around 40 mpa okay so that is again matching with this value if you do proper graphing and everything you will get exact value over here okay the upward shear because this is the upward i am plotting negative so this is minus so i got normal stress as well as shear stress with the help of more circle as well as by analytical method now one question is missing over here friends the part one that is principal planes and principal stresses now let me tell you what is principal plane first so the principal plane is basically a plane which has no shear stress so on this Mohr circle if you go along there are there are two points where there is no shear stresses acting this is a point where we don't have any shear stress so this is called as this particular point represents the principal plane similarly this point also represents the principal plane okay so these these are two principal planes a Mohr circle is going to have okay this principal plane has the larger value of normal stress so this is called as major principal plane and this particular point represents the minor principal plane okay now let's do the location of this particular principal plane so if you see here with respect to plane AB it is inclined at this angle let's say this is the angle it is inclined so this is inclined in the clockwise direction so this is going to be negative friends but if you measure it this turns out to be let's say this angle is phi so this is approximately you will get 70 degrees here so the location of major principal plane with respect to AB is clockwise direction 70 degrees but in the real life it is going to be half of it I have told you whatever angle is there in the real condition in the Mohr circle it is doubled so I will write down that over here so we got the location of major principal plane over here and what is the value of stress over here so if you see this much is 100 110 120 130 so 30 is slightly larger than this so I can say the major principal stress sigma 1 is approximately I can say 132 MPA so we got the value of major principal plane and the major principal stress okay so I can say major principal plane it has the location that is phi I can say phi 1 will be approximately equal to negative because it is in the clockwise direction and the clockwise is negative as per the sign convention so minus half of this will be there 35 degrees and the principal stress major principal stress sigma 1 will be approximately friends 132 MPA so with the help of Mohr circle I am able to get the location as well as value of major principal stress and major principal plane okay now I'll talk about minor friends minor principal plane here this point indicates the minor principal plane so with the help of so with respect to plane AB we have to find the angle over here so this is 70 this is going to be how much uh, it is going to be 110 so but this angle is basically if you see here this angle is anti-clockwise so it is going to be positive friends so for minor principal plane the angle is I'm going to call as phi 2 so this phi 2 is going to be plus uh, 70 so this is going to be how much 110 so 110 by 2 it will be so it will be 55 degrees okay and what about value so value of this value from here I can get the sigma 2 friends minor principal stress approximately so this is much 30 from here to here is 30 slightly lower than that I can say 28 MP approximately this value will be approximately Sigma 2 will be approximately 28 MPA mind it friends if you draw a proper graph you will be getting very accurate values of these quantities so I hope this method has been understood properly thank you very much